Well, it all got started back in October of 1879. That's when thousands of Civil War veterans met in Cleveland and dreamed up the idea of building a war memorial right smack dab in the middle of town. And now, 128 years later, their dream of a majestic monument is very much a reality. But parts of it are turning to nightmares. Decades of steam, salt, and neglect have taken their toll. But, and here's the good port, reinforcements are on the way. It was built in 1894 with one lofty purpose, to pay tribute to the 10,000 soldiers from Cuyahoga County who served in the Civil War. When the Soldiers and Sailors Monument in downtown Cleveland was dedicated more than 112 years ago, it was not only unique, but a true masterpiece. That's what our forefathers actually fought for, for our coming together as a nation here in the United States. And it just gives us a chance to reflect back and see all the bloodshed, one of the bloodiest wars to date. For what? For the freedoms that we carry today. Thousands pass by this monument every day, yet few of us know much about it. Take, for example, the architect, Levi Schofield. Considered a bit of a purist, he was passionate about quality and truth. It was he who insisted the monument include animals as well as people, because three times as many animals were killed in the war as compared to humans. One of Schofield's most groundbreaking achievements was his decision to include the valuable Civil War contributions made by African Americans, which he depicted in three different areas of the monument. In 1894, seeing statues of African Americans working alongside Caucasians was a sight rarely seen. The Civil War was about people, and Mr. Schofield made sure that all people were represented in the monument that actually served even from this county. We'll look at one statue on the outside, remembering this was built in 1894, where there's an African American working alongside with a Caucasian for one purpose, to being united in the United States of America today as one. Schofield's conviction for truth and fairness continues inside the monument. Tablets on the wall list the names of 9,000 Cuyahoga County men who served, and nearby are statues of women honoring their aid to the war effort. It's to show all that took part in the Civil War. But these ladies actually came along and helped out. They would clean those blades after they took someone's arm or leg off. And that probably did save quite a few lives as well of those who served. 100 years ago, this was the thing to see in downtown Cleveland. Today, it's often overlooked. Still, it stands as a vivid reminder of the price of freedom. But what many may not know is that the Soldiers and Sailors Monument has become, in many respects, a wounded soldier. Water damage is one of the problems that have occurred here over the years. A lot of your deterioration as far as the, uh, the time it takes or a lot of fading for a lot of things that were dyed and different things of color here just as well. 112 years is a long time and structures like this need continuous maintenance. Time has left the monument in a deteriorated state. The tablets, the damage that have been received from there there's a bold effect, if you will, from a number of tablets, so we need to actually have repairs for those as well. Things that were painted over the years that need to be repaired and, and put back into the proper place. The floor and whatnot, and just general cleaning, if you will, or deep cleaning for some of the uh, material as far as the stones, traffic walking over the floor, which was red and white. Um, and then there, it just comes to, this, like I said, general upkeep and maintenance even of a number of things that's within the monument. A limestone lining around the floors as well. We want to try to bring the monument back as close as possible, once again, to its original state. So all those who come to view can get a better appreciation of what we had when it first opened. Restoring the symbol of freedom, no easy task. Beneath the monument, well below Public Square, salt and moisture have been stubborn enemies. Steam heat has caused warping and discoloration. And unfortunately, updates over the years have often ignored the original architectural specifications. When you look at the baseboards, where you have a lot of your core badges, it was brass in color. These were painted black in the 40s. During the 40s, there was not much care for a lot of your architectural work. But that was, I believe, a mistake to have done that. But we're fixing mistakes throughout the years that was done to the monument. When you look at the lighting in here, the lighting you have, fluorescent lighting in the 40s, I believe, was a time frame they were installed as well. Well, originally we had chandeliers in here. We may have located even their originals. If we can get that, that would be wonderful. The official caretaker of this public monument is the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument Commission, established by the Ohio General Assembly even before the edifice was built. 
and still in existence today. The group has a battle plan to renovate and restore the monument and make it accessible to those with disabilities. One of the goals is to add access according to the standards of the American Disabilities Act. A number of people that even fight in wars today, they go and fight and they come back and they're handicapped. They still can get around, but they have not a chance to come inside here because of the handicap itself. Wheelchairs as motorized, it's all stairs around, but you can't get them up to the interior where the memorial room here is. We want to make it so that they can have access to come and see just as well as anyone else. The cost of renovation is estimated at well over $1 million, and most of that has been raised. A few months ago, a few of the precious marble tablets were removed to begin a process of straightening them. So we started the removal of the tablets, and there's a couple of processes we're investigating now to find the best way to repair, if necessary, for some of the tablets that are off. Uh, there is one method of hydration where we will take the whole tablet, emerge it in water and totally hydrate it for about six, eight months, if you will. Once it's totally hydrated, they'll take pressure plates and slowly apply pressure to straighten it back out. Uh, then it takes another six or eight months to dehydrate it. And once you have it totally straight and clean, then rehang it on the wall. Plus, color experts have been investigating, so the original coloring can be restored as well. When you look at the different colors around the monument now, a lot of fading has transpired. The ceiling has a bluish effect, but there's a lot of fading. It was a deeper blue in the aligning of the ceiling. As you walk in the floor, Gleason says that the floor was a red and white. The columns on the corners around the reliefs, they were red in color, that of the flag, as well as all around the relief. It's a pinkish color now from fading. The post on the corner that was around the medallions, that's in the monument as well, was a goldish brown, faded over the years. Despite the many needs of the monument, visitors today still enjoy a tour and find the monument breathtaking. It's just, just to remind people and never forget that this was a pretty different country. It wasn't always the same as it was before. I mean, we couldn't talk to other people. You know, just for myself, I come from a Latino background, and, you know, I things could have been the same for myself and my family. So it's just, I'm happy to see that there's importance to this and, and somebody actually took the time and the county itself to build something for, I mean, something that stands for so much. One thing that will not change in restoring the monument is free admission. Freedom is free. Some people say it's not, but freedom really is free. And this is something everyone needs to know. There's no price really to freedom.